What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, if you can't tell from my background here, I love RGB lights. Although, one thing about all the RGB in my room right now is that they're kind of dumb. Now, they can do some cool things like fades and different colors, but the individual LEDs are not addressable. So that brings us to the NeoPixel. Now, these little guys actually have a data line connected to them so that you can run information to them to select exactly what color every pixel is. Now, for the more observant of you, you might have noticed that my 3D printer back there has actually got a little bit more going on than it usually does. Well, that's because I printed an AMS riser that allows us to put NeoPixels in the printer itself. I had so much fun, I'm actually gonna add even more RGB to it in a second, and I'm gonna show you how. And it's all thanks to my favorite little chip, the ESP32. ESP32s are so much fun. I have Wi-Fi Marauder that runs on ESP32. There's a special ESP32 that's running all my LoRa devices. But today I'm gonna to show you how to put WLED on an ESP32 and run some NeoPixels. When I was figuring out how to do this, there was some weird little myths and lore and stuff going on as far as how it's supposed to be wired. Well, I've kind of demystified some of that stuff, streamlined it, now it's easier than ever. So let's quit talking about it, let's go. Now this is an extremely easy process that anybody can do. So let's switch to the top-down camera and take a look. Yeah, it's not very complicated. This is literally all you need. We've got an ESP32. This happens to be a room. And this is a strand of NeoPixels. I actually got this out of Rabbit Labs Raspberry Pi Pico Basic Starter Kit. This kit's so much fun. There's so much cool stuff in here. And honestly, if you're just trying to do any kind of projects, grab one of these because it comes with all sorts of goodies that you'll really, really like. So we'll notice that our NeoPixel lights right here come with three wires. Now we have a white wire, which is ground. We have a green wire, which is signal. And then we have a red wire, which is power. So we'll notice that on this ESP32, there's actually nothing that's named 5 volt. It's actually called VIN voltage in so that's the one we're going to use for revival and then we're going to use the ground that's right next to it and then we need to hook up to the default for wled is gpio 16 which if we look at our diagram for our esp32 pinout over here we'll notice that it actually lines up with rx2 so let's plug in some wires and then we can get started so we've got then right here then we have ground right next to it and then we're going to go to rx2 Ugh, get over here and then rx2 is right there and rx2 done and done it's that simple so let's put this down for the moment see if we can get this to sit in a way that we can see everything okay that's gonna kind of work uh here let me do that cool that works from there we can go ahead and just take our micro usb cable plug that sucker in i hate micro usb if you don't you're wrong there we go plug it in like so and uh, careful are you gonna stay where we put it this should be easier for you if you're not filming just saying it there we go hey editing sasquatch here uh one thing i didn't realize was that when i first did the dry run of this i wanted to take wled off of the esp32 so when i plugged it in it wouldn't already be working so what i did was i installed esp32 marauder onto that esp32 however what i didn't know was that ESP32 Marauder would actually output something through that data pin. So it was making the NeoPixels light up when it wasn't supposed to. So if there's nothing on your ESP32, when you plug those three wires in, it will be off. So just something to realize, it's gonna be off when you plug it in, it shouldn't be on, unless you have ESP32 Marauder installed. So let's switch to the desktop and let's get programming. But not before this message from our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay's got everything you need to make your next project a reality. Yeah, of course, they can help you with any of your PCB creation needs start to finish. They can even help you with 3D printing, they'll do resin printing, they print with so many cool different things. They can even help you out with CNC machining and injection molding. And their module store has things like NeoPixels. You can make all sorts of great stuff just using their store. If you're having trouble thinking of something to make, just go down to the module store, find some cool stuff, and that'll lead you on your way. Thanks again, PCBWay, for everything you've done. You guys are absolutely awesome. Let's get back at it. All right, so we're just gonna navigate over to install.wled.me, link down below, and plug in our ESP32. Now, I will mention that on some ESP32s, you do have to hold the boot button while plugging in the USB cable in order to get it into bootloader mode. So yeah, all we gotta do from now, just click to install. We're gonna click on our uh, USB to UART controller on COM7, click connect, and then with any luck, there we go, install WLED. Do you wanna install? Yes. Preparing installation, erasing, it's gonna go through and do everything. It takes, I don't know, two or three minutes. It's not too bad. So sit back, relax, and let it happen. After these messages, we'll be right back. 
And just like that, it's done. We'll also notice that our NeoPixels have now turned orange, which is kind of fun. You can go ahead and click next. It's going to configure the Wi-Fi. It's going to go through and scan all your Wi-Fi, and then you can actually hook it directly up. So we'll select my Wi-Fi and the password, click connect. And as soon as it connects to your network, it, it's basically going to run its own Wi-Fi. There we go. Visit device. So all we have to do now is provide power to the ESP32. It doesn't have to be hooked up to our computer. So one of the first things we're actually going to do is go into the configuration menu and go to LED preferences. Now notice over here, it says to keep it less than one amp if powering the LEDs directly from the ESP32's five volt pin, which is what we're doing. Well, you can go up to higher and make it a little bit brighter. So for the sake of argument, let's go higher and go save there make them just a tiny bit brighter. So I'll go back into LED preferences and then you'll notice here. So I'm using WS2812B LEDs. So this is the correct setting for them. If you have a different one, just use the different one. It's super easy. We're going to leave this at the default because this is basically how the normal ESP32 works and the color order is in fact GRB. Now, right now, we'll notice is that the length is set to 30, but there's not that many LEDs. We only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So we're going to set it to eight. Actually, for the sake of argument, let's set it to four and see what happens. There we go. And now you can see we've only got the four LEDs. Set this back to eight because that's what we actually have. Save. And we'll get the rest of these to fire back up in just a second. Again, we might need to reset the strand on those. There we go. Now we have them all back. All right, so if we go back to our main page here, back, we can see all the cool things that we can do. All these effects modes you can do with the NeoPixel. So we can use color waves and it's gonna start doing waves, but you'll notice it's still yellow. Well, if we go over here, we can select our colors. All of these are different colors for the NeoPixels. We'll select rainbow, and now we're going rainbow. It's really cool. But yeah, that's literally how easy it is to set up WLED. Now, there are some other cool things that we can do. Like, if we want to change this segment and make it stop at four, click the check mark here. We can make only four of those light up right here. But what we can also do is add a segment, make it four to eight, check mark here. Now we have two different segments, which can do two separate things. So we can have one doing, you know, the rainbow wave that we have it on there. We can do color wave on this one. We can do all sorts of great stuff. It's absolutely the most fun thing ever, honestly. What's also cool is because they're NeoPixels, you can actually cut them on the pads and then use wire to reconnect them. Whoops, I killed one. Oh yeah, I thought I broke them by touching them and I just realized that that was the actual profile that was playing and it would actually fade out. So that's fun. I'm gonna put these underneath my printer and I'm gonna cut out segments so that they fit and kind of maximize the underside. Now what's also cool is that this ESP32 can actually power and run multiple strips. Let me show you how. So obviously we can just hop onto the end of this strip and wire another one, but what if the end of this strip is nowhere near what we wanna power? Well, as long as the ESP32 is close enough to where our strip is, what we can do is go into the configuration, go into LED preferences. If we scroll down to right here, we can add another setup. So it's like almost running another virtual machine. And what's cool about this is we can select a GPIO pin, say like 23 or something. I'm not going to actually do it, but basically it will run the second segment off of the ESP32 data line. So all you have to do is run the green wire from the LEDs into the GPIO 23, and then this will control it just like it would control the other lights. So what's cool about that is that like on my printer, so I have the top lights and the bottom lights and they're set up on different segments. However, I don't have the top lights physically connected to the bottom lights. So now instead of actually having to connect one strip to the other strip, I can connect two strips just to the ESP32 and control them separately. Very, very cool. So yeah, that's literally all it takes to control your very own NeoPixels. It's that easy. When I first started researching this process, it actually seemed kind of complicated and people were talking about soldering in resistors and things like that. But turns out you really don't need them. Now, if you know a really good reason why to add a resistor to this, please let me know down in the comments below and I'd be glad to take up that information. All right, so I guess there's nowhere to go from here but to start actually adding the lights to the printer. So let's do a little bit of a montage. And that calls for the TV tray of, of science. science. All right, all right, so we've got some flux, wire, NeoPixels, solder, and a wire stripper. I think that pretty much takes care of it. Oh yeah, and my trusty TS1C. All right, let's get at it. One thing to note about NeoPixels is that they do have a direction on them. If you look super close, you can see actually the arrow right next to the NeoPixel. That arrow tells you which direction to run them. One. 
What's nice is you can use the adhesive to stick it to your worktop, so a little cheap. All right, back at it. All right, so we've got four strips together. All I gotta do is solder the input wires to this and we're ready to install it. Next day editing Sasquatch here. I wanted to do the soldering with it on because I thought it would look cool and be easier to see. Clearly that was a bad idea. So obviously what I did was I actually fried the ESP, shorting the thing out because I'm soldering live connections inside a printer with a my cell phone right in front of me. It was really hard to film. I could literally hear you screaming through the screen the entire time how stupid it was. I considered scrapping the entire time lapse, but you guys like to see me make mistakes and do stupid things, so I left it in. I did end up redoing pretty much everything off camera just to make it all work, but here's a video of it completely done. It's still really cool. And that's how easy it is to hook up WLED. It's such a fun project. Are there any other projects like this you want me to cover? Leave a comment down below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you next time.